Well, there's a slight routing debacle, but we recovered and I'm loving it. Hi. Holla! Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the benefit of hindsight, that seems uh, kind of cute now. But we got our bikes loaded up and ready to go on our adventure kind of early. We wanted to hit this coffee shop right when it opened at 8 a.m. to get our breakfast and get caffeinated. Yeah, we want to be up here. We are riding out of Traverse City after spending the night in an Airbnb. Uh, they were just about to open up the National Cherry Festival. Here we go! But yeah, we rode this bike trail along the lake right through the city here. On our way to the bikepacking.com North Coast Trail. Leaving Traverse City. The North Country Trail, not the North Coast Trail. So we're taking a rail trail out of town. I guess there's a considerable suburban ring around Traverse City. So we probably have to take this to get out into the forest. Do you know what the name of this trail is? Uh, it said it's the... Oh, it's the so this is the Tarp Trail out of town. Right. Looks like tons of people are commuting into town on it. It's nice they have this bike path, but it would make so much sense for that rail on the right to be a commuter line. Instead, there's a horrible strode on the other side of these woods to the left, full of traffic and people trying to get into the city. This country makes no sense sometimes. <laughs> But yeah, this was a great rail trail to get us out of town. Basically, we took the trail and then we cut off onto these residential roads. This could be an off-road climb. So we climbed about a thousand feet through these residential neighborhoods to get to the Vasa Trailhead. The Vasa Trailhead led to a whole network of single track and mountain biking trails and things like that. What we had done on this trip is we had looked at that bikepacking.com North Country Trail route and then I put that into Ride With GPS and searched, and we found a loop uh, someone had made from Traverse City. So basically we took that loop and then Aaron and Ben tweaked it to make it work for what we wanted to do on our trip. So to get to the North Country Trail, we went through these off-road trails. Well, one of the problems that we didn't realize is the mountain bike trail part we were on a little bit after, what you're seeing here was one direction that switches yearly, something I had never heard of. So we were basically going down mountain bike trails the wrong way. So we decided to try and reroute to get off doing that. We only passed two mountain bikers while we were going the wrong way, but still felt kind of bad about it. It ended up taking us a little out of the way on some of these trails here, but they're really cool trails anyways. And we really didn't lose too much time doing that. So our overall plan was gonna have us do almost this entire day on single track, this little beginning part you're seeing here on the Vasa Trail system. And then it would be almost the rest of the day would be exclusively on the bikepacking.com North Country Trail route. Their route takes you mostly sticking on the trail and through the section we rode on day one almost entirely. The sections of the trail you're not allowed to ride, they have made a file that takes you off onto the forest roads. And when we talk about the forest roads, this is what they look like here. You have to be fairly careful on them, at least when we were there with how dry it was, because they could be very sandy. Uh, this was our first experience with getting a little bit bogged down in them. You kind of could pick a line and sometimes get around other times with the loaded bikes, and especially with me having a lot of weight on the front. I just buried the front tire and I had to walk through. Uh, the article on the website says that the, the trail or the route overall is 99% rideable. I would like to see what my other friend's uh, opinion on how much we walked is i'd say in the section we did it was more like maybe 85 percent rideable i don't I thought that would be different depending on what bike you're riding, how experienced you are. To make up some time we lost when we rerouted, we did jump on this road. I think it was only for a couple miles to get ourselves back on track. And after this, it was pretty much all the route from the website. The route was pretty stunning with all these inland lakes and trees. And it really, the feeling is 
it's like a hiking trail. That's totally the vibe you get. I think that's what this trail is probably most known for. As mentioned, you are allowed to ride all the sections that we did ride, and it'll have you get off if you're not allowed to ride it. Uh, the trail is marked by these blue blazes on the trees you'll see here. I got really good at looking for those. We did have the files, all of us on our Wahoo, to follow, but anyone who's done mountain biking and navigating in the woods knows that when it comes to tight turns and little quick whys, it could be a little hard to tell, at least with the Wahoos that we use. But, so I just found it better to always kind of look for that line of sight of the, the blue markings like you could see here on the left. On the article on the website, they talk about how there's no significant elevation on this. The thing that we didn't really account for, you know, when you just look at the overall number, that is maybe true. I think it was 3,000 feet of elevation on this first day. Not nothing, but not crazy. But like I'm saying, what you don't account for is there's a lot of little steep up and downs. And when you're riding a loaded bike, that stuff adds up really quickly. And I feel like maybe even more challenging than like a long steady 5% climb through the mountains. So don't be fooled when you read that. Like this is uh, stuff that is really gonna take it out of your legs. And it also makes for a lot of fun descents like this here. But you can also see how tight it is sometimes. I know a couple of the comments recommended not using pan earbags. Ben did and I did and Brad did all different kinds. Wasn't really an issue for us um, to get between the trees. I think I clipped mine once, but it didn't really have an effect. The one thing I had to do with my rack set up a little ways in, like way back on the mountain bike trails, was secure mine in a couple extra spots because I was using a bag and a rack setup that weren't really worked made to go together. So those model infinity tools I've showed on the channel that I really like a lot. I just use those to keep my bags from uh, flopping around at all. I believe this area was called Valley of the Giants and some of its old growth forest. It was really, really pretty. Uh, we stopped at the creek down here. I think we filtered some water, rinsed off our faces, just a little break. I almost tripped and fell down. <laughs> But yeah, really, really cool. Getting back to the uh, equipment selections, I believe Brad and Aaron were pretty happy with their bag setup. Brad had mentioned that he's going to switch out his handlebars uh, on his Surly Bridge Club, something more like you see me using here, the Velo Orange granola bars, but he's talked about a number of ones he's looking at. Ben was saying that he would not do this trip running the full pannier setup again. You know, something, he'd prefer something a little more secure. We are gonna do some other videos, live streams and stuff where I let them speak for themselves on the equipment choices. So look out for those because I don't want to put words in their mouth. These are just kind of the conversations we had around the campfire as we were on vacation. How do you do this like in September? Yeah, as you could see the single track here through the ferns, that is one thing I was wondering. I'm like, does this come become completely overgrown or do enough people hike it and walk it that it makes it stay clear in that path or is there some trail maintenance i mean you feel so far out there that uh, that's why i was wondering like if by september could you even see where the trail is <laughs> is it is it really hard to ride then before the leaves drop i have no idea if anyone has done it let me know uh, i would love to visualize it i've watched some other videos in the late fall and i've watched some other that must be made around the time we did it so i'm not sure as you can see here like these bridges and stuff sometimes you're able to get over them sometimes they don't have ramps up and onto them so you are hopping off and on the bike here comes a scene that i think most bike packers and bike tourists are used to the side of the gas station lunch I think it was already about two o'clock here, and this is when we started to kind of joke around. I think we're gonna be eating camp meals tonight. We actually did have a location selected to hop off the trail for dinner that looked like it was gonna have good beer and stuff like that, but we are realizing we are moving way slower than we expected. Uh, Aaron had used the term naive when it came to our planning. Yeah, that is the right term. We were just overly optimistic in our planning. To think these first two days that we would get 70 miles on each day uh, was a little nuts. You know, I guess part of my thinking was we've gone and camped at mountain bike places like Jake's Rocks and we rode like 40 miles, you know, mountain biking around and taking breaks and stuff like that. The thing I just don't think I was accounting for is one, the slow going of single track 
the sand that slowed us down, the roots and all that, six mile an hour average. And then just the loaded bikes with that up and down I had mentioned before that just limits your pace. Uh, really, it's just a whole different ball game. So the riding is awesome, as you can see here, this lake off to the left, these really, really cool trails. But yeah, we just didn't know what we were really getting ourselves into on our first kind of true bike packing trip. So we did have a reserved campsite this night and that was our ultimate goal. Uh, so we kind of pushed on enjoying the scenery, this beautiful scenery, this awesome riding. But I think to each one of us in different ways, the realization was starting to creep in as it got later in the day that we were not gonna make it all the way. You know, some of us, it was a energy and endurance thing. I know I was thinking about trying to navigate these roads at night, uh, something I was not gonna wanna do. And then other, just the fact that this is our vacation and we wanna be able to also enjoy the scenery and ourselves a bit. What a day. So yeah, you know, there is a time and a place for that kind of trip that's always a challenge. And I know some people that's their favorite thing. They wanna explore their limits and see how far they can push. We also wanted to go swimming and stop at restaurants and drink some beer and sit around the campfire. So there came a time where we sat down and we pulled out the maps and realized, let's find a different place to stay. Luckily, we, there was a campground that was a little closer. I think our day ended up being 58 miles instead of the planned 73. It was really the right decision to do because once we made it, like these awesome views down to the river and everything became even more enjoyable, just taking off a little pressure. I think once we made the decision, we had about 10 miles to go. And it was kind of funny because Aaron's like, well, it's on roads. And then we're like, well, this is what roads means around here. So it could still be a little bit slow going and a little sandy and all that kind of stuff, even after we had decided to divert our way to a different campground. This is where we're sitting there making that decision, actually. So it's all beyond here is where we're working our way to our ultimate goal for the night. We also considered the stealth camping option because you are not really passing a lot of people or anything out here. But, you know, it is nice to be at a campground with water and a fire pit and firewood and all that kind of stuff, too. So yeah, I was not disappointed in our decision at all. It was the smart thing to do. Erin asked if we would have made the same decision if she wasn't there to end the ride early. I said, probably not. And it would have been a really big mistake. And when you see the day two video at the beginning, you absolutely will understand why I'm saying that. <laughs> what we would have been doing potentially close to dusk and in the dark on tired legs would not have been fun. So here we are on the pavement, heading to the campground that we had found. Uh, a couple miles, a little bit of climbing, a little bit of descending, but obviously not a bad ride at all, especially after what we had just been through. We did uh, get set up camp and then we came back to this little bone launch here to get ourselves rinsed off and cleaned up for the evening. How do I look? Close up, Seven. The, close up of the legs, babe. Uh, pretty close. <laughs> Aaron had banged up her legs pretty good, hitting the pedals and times when we had to push the bikes. Um, but yeah, after getting set up, we hung some uh, bags in the woods with all our food in it. You know, more worried about raccoons, but I guess there is a slight chance of bears around here as well. But that was it. That was day one. Uh, interesting, definitely eye-opening. We just had some dehydrated camp meals around the fire. And that's pretty much how we ended it. So definitely uh, subscribe if you wanna see what happens with the rest of this really interesting adventure. Hit that like button, check out our little sticker and t-shirt store below if you wanna support this kind of content and I will see you in the next one.